Good evening and welcome to Morning Star Lutheran Church. We continue our series created for community, our midweek Lenten series. We hope that your time with us has been meaningful. We pray that the Spirit has moved you with the beautiful music that we've been sharing. We pray that the Word of God has uh, helped your faith to grow and challenged your sense of discipleship. Tonight, we continue our series, and the theme is In Community with Christ. We'll take a look at our scripture lesson and see what it means to be with Jesus, to walk with Jesus as he goes to the cross for our sake and as we are called to be disciples in this world. Let's begin our time together tonight with a prayer. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. Mysterious one, in Jesus, you redeem us and invite all people to a place in your glory. Draw us closer to you, and in so doing, draw us closer to one another, that we may be strengthened to follow in the way of Jesus, the way of the cross and of resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light of the world is Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. This evening's lesson comes to us from the Gospel of St. Mark, the 10th chapter. We begin with the 32nd verse. Glory to you, O Lord. In this lesson for this evening, Jesus for a third time foretells his death and resurrection to the disciples. And we have a sense, a growing sense, of what it means to follow Christ. Here's the gospel lesson. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, spit on him, and flog him. They will kill him. And after three days... He will rise again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. And so Jesus called them all and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must become your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be the slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue our chance to let scripture guide us as we look at what it means to be in community with all that God has made. Tonight, as we prepare for Holy Week, we, we see Jesus in another way that helps us realize what it means to be in community with him. Throughout the Gospel of John and throughout the Gospel of Mark, we have seen over and over again that Jesus is building community in a new way, that the kingdom of heaven is going to be something new, not just something that the world has seen before and done in a better way. But Jesus is showing us that the community of God, the family of God, the kingdom of God, is going to be something that is wholly new to the world. We hear Jesus as he describes what is going to happen in Jerusalem. As Jesus and the disciples and the crowds that are following get closer and closer to Jerusalem, Jesus wants his friends, he wants his closest disciples to really hear and understand what will happen. He makes no bones about it. You really can't misunderstand what he says. When I get there, when the Son of Man gets to Jerusalem, he will be he will be condemned. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. He will be beaten and tortured 
and he will be killed. And after three days, he will rise again. Jesus makes it very clear that where he goes, he goes for the salvation of all people. He goes at great cost to himself. He goes knowing that it will be a sacrifice of his body, of his blood, of his life. And it's into this journey that we are each invited to come. We are invited as children of God to share this journey of the cross, to share this journey of self-sacrifice as we are in community with Jesus. Jesus' disciples, James and John, and then the rest, they're still having a hard time understanding what it means to travel in the way of the cross because James and John, they want to know about the glory. They want to know if they can sit close to Jesus so that when he is in his glory, they might bask in it as well. And Jesus says, you don't know what you're asking. You're asking to, to drink from the same cup that I'm drinking from. You're asking to be baptized with the same baptism that I have received. Do you think you can do that? And, and bless their hearts, they say, we could do it, we're able. And you know they don't fully understand. Remember back when Jesus was baptized? Went to the River Jordan, John the Baptist baptized him, and right away Jesus was driven out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit so that he might, he might know what his ministry was going to be about. The devil, the tempter, showed him all sorts of ways that he could be glorified in a way that was easy. Fill yourself if you're hungry. Save yourself if you're in danger. Let God protect you. And again and again, after being baptized, Jesus showed that he was going to be faithful to God's calling. As the Son of God and the Son of Man, as the Lamb of God for all people, Jesus very quickly in his ministry showed himself and then all those around him that his path was going to go to the cross so that God could be glorified. His path was not going to be the one of adulation and praise by the crowd and glory for his followers, but rather salvation at great, great cost. Jesus tells James and John and the other 10, if you're going to follow me, if you're going to be with me, if you are going to be my disciple and you are going to be a part of my ministry, it means that this community will take you much closer to the cross than you would ever have wished. It will take you to the grave. It will take you to death. And then you will be carried through to what's next. Because to be in community with Christ means we have to go to the dark places. Jesus tells his disciples and he tells you and me that if you are going to be with me, you're going to go to the difficult places and you are going to experience the difficult things. Because it's there that mercy goes. It's there that grace goes. If you're looking for limelight, you can find it, but it's going to be fleeting. But if you're looking for life, you have to follow me to the cross first. This is part of our challenge during the season of Lent, to not turn away from where Jesus' footsteps lead. We have to go. We have to go to Golgotha. We have to go to the hill where the crosses await Jesus and the two thieves. We have to go to the tomb where Jesus' broken body is laid to rest. Because it is in these places that we see the very passion of God. And we see the very life-giving blood that Jesus is willing to give, to shed, to share for us. There is no community for us without it. Because if we avoid all that Christ does for us, we can't be in community with him. If we gloss over the struggle, if we gloss over the pain, 
then we've taken what he's offered us and we've taken it for granted. We've treated it lightly. And instead, we should see the very depths of love that Jesus has for us. We should be able to see by looking and opening our hearts and our lives to the depth of this passion, we should be able to catch a glimpse of God's great love for you and me. This is what God has given his son for, that we might be in community with Jesus so that we might become closer to God for all time. This is where Lent takes us. This is where we go. Knowing that it's not our, our choice, our favorite place to be, but this is where Jesus has gone for our sake, and we go with him. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live
Watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. that we can share now. Let us pray. Almighty God, strengthen our hearts and strengthen our spirits that we might, in community with your Son, walk into the dark places. That we might draw closer to Jerusalem, closer to arrest, closer to mocking and torture, crucifixion and death. This is not what we want, but this is what Jesus has had to do so that we might have a relationship with you. And so we pray through the guidance of your Holy Spirit, we would not turn away, but we would follow your son, that we would honor and glorify and praise all that he does for our sake. Help us this night as we worship together to be mindful of all those who are trapped in dark places. Help us to open our hearts and open our lives to people who are already suffering. We pray for those who are grieving this night. We pray for those who are lost and alone. We pray for those that are surrounded by and buried by guilt and shame. We pray for those who are victims, victims of abuse and victims of injustice. We pray for those who are powerless. We pray for those who suffer, suffer things not of their own making. Gracious God, it is into these places of pain and anguish that your son travels and he comes with mercy and with love and with grace and with hope. And so we pray that as your son's disciples and as your children, we would go there too. Help us as individuals and help us as a community of faith. Help us as Morning Star Lutheran Church, your people, be in community with your son, Jesus, and go where he would go and does go for the sake of the world. Strengthen the ministry of our own personal discipleship. Strengthen the shared ministry that happens through this congregation and help this community travel more closely with your son, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have been created to be a community of faith. And so let us express that faith using the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the time of temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise the name to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever
I hope that you have enjoyed this midweek Lenten series. I hope that you have learned a little bit more about the Holden Evening Prayer Service, this beautiful musical setting. When we're able to worship together, perhaps next time we do the Holden Evening Prayer, it will be in, in, in person together, and you'll be able to sing what you have learned and join us in this beautiful piece. Tonight, if you would receive this blessing, the creator who fashions us together with all things, the Christ who leads us into a new and beloved community, and the spirit who holds us in the communion of the saints. One God, bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Join together in Christ. Amen. Good night. Have a blessed Holy Week. Thank mm -hmm. you.